Now, uh, as I was saying before, I'm going to be going through um, everything that you guys are going to need to get done to actually get your site up and running and ready to be built. Now, in the class next week, while I would like to be able to go ahead and dive into the actual construction of the site, um, I know that some of you may be experienced with WordPress and others uh, perhaps have never built a single WordPress site before. So uh, next week's class um, will actually be teaching you about WordPress itself just because um, I need to make sure you guys have all that fundamental knowledge before I proceed with uh, putting the actual site together. So tonight's going to simply involve uh, getting this website set up. Now, to start with, we need to um, add our domain name to our website hosting account. Now, if you already have a website hosting account where um, you can use multiple domain names on the same account, um, then you will obviously be wanting to add a new add-on domain to this particular account. Um, for the rest of you that perhaps didn't have a website hosting account before, um, all you have to do is enter in your new domain name um, along with you know, your registration information when you're creating that hosting account, and it will automatically set up that domain as the primary domain name of your hosting account. Um, so that part is pretty straightforward and simple. But whether you have to do this at this point or um, perhaps further down the road when you start to create additional sites, all of you will end up finding out that um, at one time or another you should need this particular knowledge. Now, um, I'm actually in the control panel here for a shared hosting account on HostGator. Um, because the shared account should be what most of you guys are using. I still use these myself, even though I have dedicated servers for uh, my actual plugin business sites. For all of my Amazon affiliate sites, I use a series of HostGator shared accounts, and I will typically put um, maybe 20 or 30 different websites on each of these shared hosting accounts. So. Obviously, this helps to reduce the uh, monthly cost that you are going to experience by running these sites. Um, I believe it runs about $10 a month for uh, this uh, particular plan, which is the, uh, the Baby Croc plan. I think it's their, their middle plan that they offer for the shared hosting. Um, so when you're running 20 or 30 different sites and you're only paying $10 a month for your hosting for those 20 or 30 sites, then obviously your, your monthly expense per website uh, becomes almost non-existent. Um, Kathleen is asking, when do you not want to have a shared hosting account? Really the only reason why I would recommend any of you going outside of the shared hosting account um, range is simply uh, if you get a website that is getting uh, constant traffic um, all the time or perhaps you have some really busy peak times. Um, the main restriction that you experience with a shared website hosting account, Kathleen, is actually uh, the number of uh, processes that you can have running. Um, you can see on my page right here where it says process is running, and it says one out of 25. Well, this is the maximum uh, number of simultaneous processes that can be running on a shared account at one particular time. So um, a process can actually be uh, different types of things. It could be somebody accessing uh, your website, for example, but then it could also be uh, a database call. Um, so sometimes just one person visiting your site could potentially 
uh, create um, maybe two or three different processes to show up. Um, they'll be short-lived, so the point is you don't need more than 25 unless you just have um, essentially a couple of dozen people all visiting uh, one website or, a, or, or a, uh, a combination of all the different sites on your shared hosting account all at the same time. Um, so as long as your, your traffic is spread out throughout the day, then uh, you should be fine with the shared hosting accounts. And honestly, if you're on HostGator, for example, you'll know exactly when you start to uh, take up too much of their server resources because they'll simply just suspend your sites and then uh, contact you about it later, which isn't necessarily the best way to go about doing it, but even upgrading to their next level of hosting, like a, um, a VPS, for example, um, that can run you $100 a month, but they'll still uh, have this 25 process limit on you and um, still shut your sites down. Uh, so the only way you can avoid that is by actually getting on a dedicated server. And they're just simply not cheap. Um, even even uh, the lowest price dedicated servers are, I want to say, $200 a month or something like that. I pay about $300 for mine. They're a little more powerful. Um, Yeah, there are, there are a lot of different hosting options out there. So I so I do recommend shared hosting. However, just uh, you know, maybe g visit your websites during the peak of the day and just uh, log into your control panel and just take a look at the number of running processes that you have here, um, and just you know look how close you're getting to your limit, and you can. Um, adjust the number of websites you are loading onto a particular um, shared account, you know, based on this information that you're receiving. Let's see, uh, Pamela is asking about these. Um, I, I actually don't uh, do the backups. Um, automatically that they offer. Um, I'll come through and actually uh, run backups on my websites individually. Um, let's see, you're asking though if, if the uh, No, I'm actually I'm actually above the inode limit here. Um, uh, Pamela was asking about the uh, the automatic backups failing um, for the inode limit here. Um, I'm actually under on my megabytes, but the number of files actually have 147,000 uh, different files, all on this one shared hosting account. Um, you just have to keep that under a hundred thousand, uh, or else they won't run those automatic backups for you, um, and and that's simply just so they're not um, using more resources than you know the the ten dollars a month or so that you're paying for. Let's see, Linda says that she's using a HostGator reseller account. Um, I, I have never actually used HostGator reseller, so I can't say for sure how that is working. Um, you're paying paying $25 a month. See, I don't, I don't know if when you, when you spawn off a new account, for example, um, you're, you're likely I'm assuming still uh, creating accounts all on the same server. I guess the question is um, whether or not that 25 process limit applies to each account that you're creating or to um, your account overall. However, I, 
that would seem silly if they were applying it to your account overall because then you'd be limited in, in how much you could really resell. Do you use the uh, the WHM to uh, to manage those and to create the new accounts, Linda? Okay, okay. They, yeah, that's the same thing that they provide for you with VPS or dedicated servers. Um, so it sounds like the reseller account is essentially a uh, VPS server, perhaps. Um, where they just allow you to create uh, new accounts that that are separated. Um, however, I, I I'm still not a hundred percent sure as to whether they would apply that process limit or not to you. I would I would imagine that they might still um, apply that process limit simply because um, they were they were still putting that on uh, the uh, VPS servers, for example. Um, I just got, after a while, I, I ran VPS servers for uh, a number of years um, and always ran into problems with them because they would keep shutting down my sites whenever I'd, uh, especially like be in the middle of a plugin launch or something, which is obviously a, a major problem. Um, they would just simply shut it down and they wouldn't even bother with uh, emailing me about it. Um, cloud, are, are you getting cloud hosting Stan through HostGator or is that through a different company? Cloud, cloud hosting should be fairly scalable, um, at least uh, by definition. Cloud hosting essentially... Um, you're running on a on a cloud of a bunch of different servers, so that way when one of them gets uh, bogged down, it's not actually running um, slow while all the other servers are running fine. It just simply uh, shares the load amongst the cloud, and it could be regards to uh, bandwidth or uh, storage space. Um, So, uh, wow, well, we got off onto a long rant about uh, website hosting here. I, yes, Nicole, uh, HostGator should be international. I'm, I'm wanting to say that they're actually one of the uh, top uh, international web hosts. Um, you you are right though, Susan. Um, Hostgator has I don't know over over the last couple of years I did have a number of problems with them. Uh, their servers are reliable. I feel like they do not overcrowd their servers, which is really really important. If you've ever used like a GoDaddy web hosting before or something. Um, they absolutely pack their servers, which is why they're able to offer their hosting for, I forget what it is, three or four dollars a month or something insanely cheap like that. You usually end up getting what you pay for uh, in regards to website hosting. Um, so while, while HostGator may not be perfect, um, in all regards, I feel like if you're if you're aware of what their restrictions are, for example, and you try to um, uh, do your best to stay within those guidelines, if you're not sure, you know, call somebody up there and ask them what type of restrictions you have on your account because they really don't disclose all of that uh, on the sales pages, which uh, I've given them a hard time about a number of different times. Um, yes, yes, you're definitely right, Susan. That's uh, the main thing that I'm kind of referring to in terms of uh, at least the problems that I had with HostGator. Um, I've used HostGator for many, many, many years, and they used to be like on point, you know, like you had a problem, you emailed somebody and like, bam, within an hour it was fixed and they sent you a note 
telling you, you know, hey, it's all taken care of. Thanks. Let me know if you need something else. And these days you email them and you almost have to like find the problems for them, um, at least in, in my experiences, um, and, and approach them about it. And they'll even sometimes tell you that everything is fine uh, when, you know, obviously for me, some, I can usually pick out when something uh, is or is not right and just say, hey, you know, no, that's not the case. I, I kind of know what I'm talking about at least. Um, so, yeah, in, in those regards, Susan, yes, uh, HostGator's customer service is definitely not what it used to be. Um, However, in terms of what you're actually getting beyond the customer service itself, uh, many hosting companies are really uh, the same. Um, a lot of them uh, will actually, you know, like uh, when there were recent problems with some of HostGator servers, it wasn't just HostGator that went down. It was also Bluehost, and uh, there were at least one or two other um big companies that kind of all went down for a period of time um, within the last couple of months or something. Um, the the point is that like a lot of these servers may be sitting literally right next to each other in a big warehouse somewhere, uh, but one is, you know, owned by HostGator and the other one might be owned by a different company, um, or they might be on these same internet backbone, for example, which means that if they have any problems uh, with that main connection to the internet that all those servers rely upon, um, and they're renting space out, uh, then, you know, it can it can still trickle down to multiple different companies. So I kind of feel like as long as you're getting what you're paying for out of your um, your monthly uh, payment and, and you're not having any issues with their service, um, then it's definitely um, not an issue. Like I, I personally have not had major issues with my shared hosting accounts with HostGator. Uh, where I ran into big problems, shockingly enough, was when I was, uh, was uh, using the VPS accounts. They seemed even more restrictive on the VPS than the shared hosting. And yet, you know, they'll pressure you into making those upgrades. Um, so, you know, just uh, be mindful of the resources that you're using up. Um, let's see, uh, Will, hey, how you doing tonight, Will? Uh, Will says that he's with Bluehost and he thinks they are really customer service friendly. I, I used Bluehost many, many years ago. Um, and I wasn't super impressed with them, but then again, I have I have no personal knowledge of them at any point in the last uh, at least four to five years. I would have to guess off the top of my head. Um, let's see, Susan, Digital FAQ recommends our Vix Site Five and Name Jeep. Any comments? I I have not heard of the first two. Um, I know of Namecheap, but mostly for um, domain name registration. Um, but in terms of website hosting, I'm, I do not have any personal experience with any of those three companies. Um, and, and I don't think I've even heard from customers with personal experience with them either. So my, my comments on those companies would be uh, probably not too useful. <laughs> Yes, you're you're right, Alice. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about HostGator. There, she says they closed me down because of a simple script problem. Um, they they will do that type of stuff sometimes, and not even let you know about it. You just have to email them when you notice your site is down and say, "Hey, why are my sites down?" And then they tell you why, and then you have to figure out what you're supposed to do to fix it and get them to agree to reactivate it for you. It's usually something you can get taken care of pretty quickly. You just, you have to keep on them and you have to, you know, uh, essentially 
let them know that maybe maybe you're not quite sure what the problem is or whatever and you would like for them to look into it for you um and then you know let them know that you are willing to uh, do whatever is necessary to resolve the problem that they have the reason why they shut the sites down um and then they'll typically ask you for your IP address, grant you access to your sites while still uh, keeping them closed down to the public. Um, and then you can get those changes made, you let them know, and they'll, they'll turn the sites back on pretty quickly once you get that whole process rolling and get taken care of what, uh, what they want you to get taken care of. However, it, it's definitely uh, a bit of a pain to go through all of that. Oh, you're you're saying EIG now that that bought out um, uh, Hostgator now owns Bluehost as well. That would make sense why they um, why they both went down when they had that that recent outage over the last uh, I want to say it was about a m month ago, if I'm not mistaken. Bluest has a customer service feedback system after every call. That's cool. If Pamela, if the only issue that you're having in terms of the inodes is actually getting the site backed up or not, um, if if they're uh, like Amazon affiliate sites that you're not changing on a regular basis, just you know make a habit of uh, taking a backup of those sites after you've performed um, some type of work to them. Um, and you don't even have to back up all your sites at once. You can do them uh, each individually. Um, so if as long as that's the case, if there's not like on a, on a standard WordPress site where you just have people visiting it um, and you're trying to get them to like click on an affiliate ad or something like that, there's there's really not any constant um, new data being added into those WordPress sites. Um, so for example, if you build the site, you take a backup of the entire site and make sure you get all the uh, files in the public HTML directory and then make sure you get a, a database backup as well. Um, then even a year down the road, if something goes wrong with that site, as long as you hadn't made any changes to it since that backup, then you can restore that backup from a year ago uh, without any kind of problems. So in that regard, it, if, if it may not be worth the extra uh, cost to go up to reseller, for example, if that's the only issue that you're having. You also have Host Monster and Web Hosting Pad. I think Host Monster was included in that outage not too long ago. If I'm not mistaken, Alice, how are how are they for a company? Right, I agree, Linda. They they do have people there 24 hours a day. Um, they may not be the best customer service in the world, um, especially not compared to what they used to be. Um, but you can at least get a hold of somebody at HostGator at any time. Uh, even in the middle of the night, you notice your sites are down. You can get people to take care of that for you in the middle of the night, uh, which is definitely uh, a plus. I, in terms of degradation of their service, since they, uh, you know, were recently sold to somebody else, uh, I, I haven't noticed anything on my dedicated servers, at least, but. Um, the shared hosting, I guess I don't pay that close of uh, attention to anymore. Okay, Bernie is saying, Hostgator, Bluehost, FatCal, 
and there are several others uh, he is saying uh, all owned by EIG Endurance International Group in Burlington, Massachusetts. Um, so yeah, you know, while it may look like this company is different from this company, you know, a little while ago I was basically saying that, uh, <clears throat> you know, what you're getting through one company, as long as you're happy with what you're paying for, um, there's not really a lot of reason to switch around because you may still be doing business with the exact same uh, company in the end. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to try to get back on track here. Uh, hosting is definitely a, a subject that uh, I can tell causes some um, causes some discussion to uh, get brought up there. Uh, Stan says, is there any way to schedule a ping to your site to be sure it is up and running? Are you talking about to make sure like your domain name um, change has uh, initiated correctly, Stan? Um, you, you should be able to go to Google and just type in, um, you know, ping a website or something like that. And uh, they should have tons of, of uh, free sites out there that would do that type of thing for you. Um, if you're if you're looking to tell whether your um, well, I'll, I'll get to all this in a minute. If it's if it's about the domain name posting, um, just um, try try logging into your control panel through your domain name itself instead of through your primary domain name or using an IP address for your server. Um, if you've just transferred a domain name, uh, as long as you can reach it uh, using the domain name uh, and then, you know, just add forward slash cPanel to whatever your domain name is and uh, see if it'll reach the site that way. And if it's not, then it, then it uh, either isn't set up right with the hosting account or the uh, domain name servers haven't been set on the domain name. Um, so this is actually the uh, beginning of tonight's uh, lesson. I will be adding a domain name onto this hosting account. Um, I actually, you know, I'm going to be building downcomforterguide.com for you guys throughout this series. Now, uh, this particular domain name is actually already added to this particular hosting account. Um, I have uh, the domain name completely blank, uh, but I still want to exactly show you how this is done. Um, on the control panel page, sorry, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. On the control panel page, simply look for the domains section. And under there, you have a button that says, add-on domains. Now all you have to do is uh, type in the information right here. Type in your domain name, uh, downcomfortguide.com for me. And then once you click over here, it will automatically provide you with uh, a username and the document root. And then you can simply add in your own password and click on add domain to add this to your account. Now, once you have added the domain name to your hosting account, uh, you can really do this in either, either order, but I show it in this order um, simply because I need to come into the control panel and get this information right here. All the way down in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, you have this account information and uh, two name servers that are listed, ns2229.hostgator.com and ns2230.hostgator.com. So these are the name servers for my website hosting account. Now, if you've never done this before, what that means is that is where I point my domain names to. Now, I used GoDaddy to register this particular domain. All you have to do is uh, go into the menu here, 
to domain management. And uh, you'll be provided with a list of domain names that are registered for this particular account. Just look for your domain name here, click on it, and then you'll be taken to another page here where you can uh, actually set those name servers. Now, as you can see, I have these already set up as the correct name servers right here. However, um, if they're not already set up correctly for your domain name, then just click on the Manage button. And in this screen, make sure you're setting this up as a custom uh, setup type and not standard. And this allows you to set your own name servers. So just click on Add Name Server right here and just uh, type in one at a time your name servers and then um, click on add name server and add in the second name server so you have both of them on there save your changes um, and then once you have actually saved those changes uh, it can vary depending on the amount of time that it takes until you can actually type your domain name into a web browser and actually reach your website. Um, sometimes this can actually be done instantly and other times it could take up to uh, 48 hours or so. So um, the easiest way that you can tell if it is transferred yet or not, if um, you know everything is set up correctly with your web hosting account and also with your um, domain name uh, name servers um, all you have to do is try to type in your domain name into the browser and then just simply add cPanel onto the end of it like this and uh, you should be able to tell right away whether that's correct or not because um, it will take you to log in to your control panel if uh, everything has gone through correctly if the name servers have transferred over um, and if not then uh, you'll probably be taken to some type of uh, GoDaddy uh, holding page for your uh, domain name. Now once you have actually uh, gotten your domain name set up and running to where you can log into your control panel using your domain name itself. This is important because you need to um, make sure that your domain is actually reachable and uh, or else WordPress can't actually um, install and run correctly. So once you can reach your domain name um, cPanel, go all the way down to software and services and just look for quick install. So all you have to do here is just click on Quick Install and over on the left hand side just select WordPress. Uh, now from here all you're doing is selecting your domain name. You don't need a uh, actual subdomain entered in over here um, because we're going to be installing WordPress onto the base domain name itself. Um, I disengage the automatic upgrades. This is for WordPress. So when a new version of WordPress is released, uh, it can automatically upgrade or not. Now you also have to make sure that it's enabled um, back on the previous page for quick install, this manage installations page. Uh, but personally, I don't like to use the auto upgrades because um, if if you have uh, plugins on your site, for example, that are designed for the current version of WordPress, and then uh, especially if they're the free plugins out of the um, WordPress repository, there's no guarantee that the creators of those plugins will continue to keep the plugins up to date as WordPress uh, continues to get updated. So you don't want a working site to get automatically upgraded to a new version of WordPress and potentially cause problems and uh, you may not even know that it's actually going on. So if I'm going to run into problems on my site, 
I want to be the one that causes it, so I will actually perform these upgrades manually. Now, all you have to do here is just type in some basic information to allow WordPress to actually install itself. Um, provide an email address. Make sure this is a real email address where you can actually get the email um, because you'll get a record of your login information for your site. Um, the blog title that I provide right here, this is just whatever whatever I have decided to name my site. Now, for Amazon affiliate sites, I am often using uh, my targeted primary keyword phrase for this purpose. So for this particular site, I'm just going to call it Down Comforter Guide because that's what the site is and that's what it will be about and that's the keyword phrase that I'm trying to target. Now, the admin user, you provide a username here. I still use admin because this is how WordPress uh, used to set itself up and now it actually gives you a choice of using something different. Um, but I still just use admin. You can use whatever you want to use if you prefer to use something different. And then just provide a first and a last name. But notice you're not providing any kind of password here. Um, the password will be emailed to this email address after the installation is actually completed. Um, but then you can also get this information right here on this page. You can see I have a link to my administration area and I have uh, my username and my password that I can log into the site with. So now I can simply jump over to the website and I can log in right here. Now I'm gonna go and actually change that password here in uh, just a minute because um, obviously uh, number one all of you guys have seen it and it's uh, in my video recording so obviously I wouldn't want to leave it that way but even despite that if it's just a uh, password that nobody else has seen then um, I'll still go through and actually change it just to make it something that I will actually remember. Now, uh, what I have done here, over on the left-hand sidebar, this is the administration menu in WordPress. Under Users, you have a link that says Your Profile. So all you have to do on this page, down at the bottom, is simply set a uh, new password and then save your changes by clicking the update profile button. But while I'm here, there's actually one more thing that I want to mention, and that is the nickname field here. I set this uh, for something uh, that's, it doesn't have to be my target keyword phrase, for example, but I, I try to make it something relevant to uh, the niche because uh, sometimes, the name of the author writing a particular post will actually get displayed on your public site um, because of the uh, theme that you are using. So instead of it saying that admin wrote this particular article, I at least like it to be something that sounds better than admin. Um, so I will simply set my own nickname. Now the down expert you know, this, um, it's relevant. It still includes uh, one piece of my targeted keyword phrase, what I would consider to kind of be the main part of it, uh, the most relevant portion of uh, my keyword phrase in terms of how it relates to the products uh, that I will be promoting on this site. So I feel like this is a good fit and it's meaningful for people that see it. Um, so I'm gonna update these changes. Now, I'm gonna jump back to the dashboard right here. Uh, you see this big blue banner running across? Um, this is for Jetpack. Jetpack allows you to uh, connect your site to WordPress.com to basically be able to use the features that the WordPress.com 
blogs get to use. Now, we're technically not using the same WordPress that uh, is used on WordPress.com. Um, we use self-hosted WordPress. Uh, yes, Pamela, you can uh, name your blog title later. You don't have to do it um, initially when you are when you are installing WordPress. Um, I will I will show you uh, tonight actually where that particular uh, setting is located. Um, so for for my purposes, for what I'm trying to do with these Amazon affiliate sites, I really don't see a need to use this uh, Jetpack. So I'm actually going to go to the installed plugins list. This is in the plugins menu. If I hover over it, you can see that it opens up a longer menu with even more options, but I actually want the first option right here, which is the same as just clicking on plugins. This takes me to a list of the uh, various plugins that are actually on this site. Hey, I deleted this site. This shouldn't still be there. Um, I want this to be, uh, you know, appearing as though it was a site that was actually just installed. I'm not quite sure why that other plugin managed to hang around, um, even though I deleted the website from uh, setting it up before, so I could write the ebook for you guys. Um, okay, so now we have four plugins here. Now this is obviously a fresh WordPress installation. Um, all of these plugins were put there by WordPress itself. Now, I was talking about Jetpack and how I didn't really want that there. So I will deactivate it first, and then that allows me to completely delete it off the site. I go ahead and do this with Hello Dolly as well. Um, it's, it's pretty much pointless. Uh, puts little whimsical messages up in the corner of your screen or something. Um, a kismet is used to control comment spam, but it really doesn't do that great of a job. And I disable comments on my site anyways. And I am 100% am positive that a uh, at least one or two WordPress sites of mine a couple of years ago actually got hacked through a security vulnerability in a kismet itself. So for all these reasons, I delete this as well. Now. On those sites that were packed, I'm not saying this vulnerability still exists in a kismet. It has probably been eliminated since then. However, that plugin was actually not activated on any of those websites where I had that problem, and yet I was able to figure out that that was actually where uh, they were able to gain access to the site through. So moral of the story being, if you have plugins on your site that are not activated, you're not using them, just go ahead and delete them just to be safe. Now, WordPress Super Cache here. I like this plugin. It can help to uh, reduce the loading time for your public website visitors. So I keep this installed. However, uh, if you ever notice that if you've made some type of change on your site and it doesn't instantly uh, register on the live site for you, it's probably because of this plugin. So you can either deactivate it and activate it again once you have finished your construction uh, of the site, or if you have any issues with it while having it activated, just click on the delete cache button right up here, and this actually clears out uh, anything that this plugin has stored in terms of uh, the content for your live web pages. So um, this is what I often do for uh, the beginning of all my sites. Um, it's kind of just a, a bit of a cleanup process, if you will, to, uh, to get started with. Um, the next thing that I do, there is default content that is already created on WordPress. There is a post and there is a page and technically there is a comment uh, as well. However, I don't worry about the comment because I'm trashing the post that um, the comment is left on. 
So I simply go into all posts and trash that post, and then I go into all pages and trash the page that is already there. Yes, uh, Nicole, I, you're talking about the uh, WordPress SuperCache plugin, I assume? Yes, yes, that does make it faster for uh, when your customers go to the website. Um, basically, WordPress um, is generating each page uh, each time that it gets visited. Well, that plugin will instead of uh, generating the page every single time, it'll generate it once and store that. So then um, throughout the rest of the day, for example, then it would serve up that stored version of the page instead of trying to generate the page uh, from scratch for every single visitor. Um, you're, you're quite welcome. <laughs> Now, uh, beyond all this initial cleanup work, um, I have some things that I will always find myself doing to uh, each of the sites that I create. Now, to start with, I have uh, a number of different settings pages here in WordPress. Uh, under the settings menu, I have uh, a decent list here of various pages. Now, if you notice, all the way at the bottom, WordPress super caches actually here. So this is a menu link that was created by that plugin itself and added to uh, this particular menu. So if you're ever installing plugins and you're expecting some type of settings page available for that plugin and perhaps you don't see it uh, added as a new menu item down below settings here, um, look in the settings menu first and uh, see if it may be added to the bottom down here because some plugins will add them down here and not as completely new menus. Now the actual pages here that I want to do something with, um, there's uh, about four of them here. The first one is the general settings page. Now this is where you have the site title. This is the blog title that we were entering in uh, when we were installing the WordPress site. So if you ever need to change it or if you, you know, leave it blank, for example, like one of you were mentioning, uh, you can come back to this particular page and uh, set it or make changes to it if you need to. Now the next part here, uh, the tagline directly below it. What I'm looking to do is I kind of want to summarize my entire website. However, I'm, I'm kind of looking to use something here, a short sentence that um, summarizes my site, but I try not to repeat uh, these same words that I have uh, up above. So what I'm trying to do is to rephrase that in a way uh, without actually repeating those same words. Now it doesn't have to be a perfect rephrasing. Um, what I've come up with for this particular site is helping you pick out the best bedding products for your personal needs. Um, that kind of sounds like a down comforter guide, rephrased, maybe embellished slightly. Uh, I don't actually make reference to uh, down or comforter or anything of that nature, but I'm talking about bedding products and uh, helping people. So, you know, this is, um, it can help us in terms of SEO. I don't want uh, my keyword phrase uh, that I'm targeting on the site repeated directly below it. Um, and that's because this content is going to end up getting displayed on my public website, uh, one on top of the next. Uh, let's see, Pamela. Um, I I I believe when you when you make changes to the site, um, 
there there are different settings in WordPress super cache. Um, <clears throat> they just changed it with uh, in regards to how it gets uh, set up because it's actually getting activated by default now. Um, but they just started doing this as of uh, WordPress 3.6, uh, which is the most current version that is available. Um, let me let me save my changes right here real quick and uh, jump over to this page so I can see exactly how they are uh, enabling all these particular settings in here. Um, okay, so you can see down here below uh, the expiration time. This is a number of seconds. Divide this by 60 and uh, you'll get <clears throat> a number of minutes. And this is simply uh, telling you how often the uh, content of the site would be uh, rebuilt. Now, this really doesn't have, at least with these default settings, uh, with 3,600 seconds, um, that would be, that's an hour, I think. Uh, so it's it's only once an hour if you're getting multiple site visitors um, every hour, then this can help it to load faster for uh, additional visitors to your site past the first one basically. Um, but then these settings could be changed for an Amazon affiliate site. If, you're only if your content never changes, like after you build your site, your content might not change for months until you come back and make some uh, additions to it, for example. Um, unless, unless you have advertising that's randomly generated on there. But like a lot of my plugins, for example, even if you're using WordPress super cache, um, it will still uh, break through that and actually generate from scratch each time for uh, particular things like Upsellazon where it automatically uh, picks out accessory advertisements for uh, whatever product you're promoting. Um, those types of plugins will often uh, bypass this and actually refresh it. But yes, if you make changes and on the public site you're not seeing those changes, just simply cl uh, click on this delete cache button because it's possible that um, <clears throat> your your public site could still show uh, the old content even after you have changed it. Um, not a not a stupid question by any means, Pamela. Um, <clears throat> There is definitely a little bit of uh, confusion there. They're not they're not incredibly clear, at least uh, through WordPress Super Cache itself, as to um, what exactly may be going on here. Um, now the next page that I want to talk about. Yeah, when you're well, when you're not making changes, um, Nicole, if if you have a site like an Amazon affiliate site that's not getting accessed or changed on any kind of a regular basis, um, you know, let's say you're getting um, 50 visitors a day or something, but the content would remain the same throughout the entire day, uh, <clears throat> then you could, for example, take that 3600 number. Uh, multiply it by 24, which would give you, let's see what that is, <clears throat> 86,400. So this is the number of seconds in one day. So if you uh, change that number to 86,400, then it would refresh uh, your page cache once a day instead of once an hour. And for the average Amazon affiliate site, that will actually help uh, to reduce the load time for each of your visitors, whereas the uh, initial settings for that plugin may, uh, may or may not, depending on how much traffic you're actually receiving. Um, now this page here is uh, the reading settings page. Typically, there is actually more to this page. There's actually um, an area here where you can set a 
default home page instead of uh, doing things blog style, the normal way that WordPress is set up to run. Now, uh, this actually does not show up anymore if you completely wipe out all the content from the site. But I'll be coming back to this page, um, I believe next week or the week after, um, and showing you how that whole system works. But for now, all I'm looking to do on this page is I just like to change my article feed from full text to summary. With every WordPress site, you actually have a uh, feed that goes along with it. Go to downcomforterguide.com forward slash feed. And, uh, well, it's probably not showing anything up because there's nothing on my site. You should get a feed off of any WordPress site, though. Um, and it actually contains uh, all of your content. Well, I don't want all of my content to be able to pull using my feed. It is an RSS feed. Uh, so there are actually people that will take RSS feeds and use them to build the content for their own websites. So I simply switch this to summary um, as a precaution. Not incredibly important, but uh, it's just something that I've kind of always done. The next thing I'm doing here is on the discussion page. The discussion page controls the commenting system in WordPress. And uh, as you remember me talking about with the Akismet plugin, I don't like to have the comments enabled because it's really just nothing but spam. Um, people have found a way to using a script to actually go through and post comments to WordPress websites um, without actually even visiting those websites. So if you've ever had a WordPress site set up and comments enabled and you get those completely pointless comments that don't even make sense, they might not even be talking about anything close to what you're talking about. Either that or they leave a very general statement. I loved your article. Thank you for writing it. Continue to, you know, provide this type of value and stuff. Thanks. And then they put a link to a Viagra website. <laughs> um, all that stuff is coming through automated software. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's 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 right, Will. Well, that happens even with sites that are not empty and have regular interested traffic coming through them. So uh, I don't ever want my website visitors seeing that type of junk in case it actually uh, manages to slip through and get approved on the site. So I just disable comments from the get-go. You can uh, simply uncheck this box right here, allow people to post comments on new articles, and uh, save the changes, and you're good to go. Uh, yes, you, you can do moderated comments, Rhonda. Um, the, the main thing is that it just, at least in my experiences, it's, it's been more of a headache than it's worth. Um, because, you know, you have all those spam comments um, that are absolutely relentless. And so you essentially end up weeding through uh, literally hundreds of horrible fake comments just trying to pick out one that might actually be from a, a real visitor. I feel like a blog style website is more of the type of website that is trying to um, encourage some type of um, interaction and communication with the people that are um, reading. You know, you read a blog post and, and you make comments based on what the people were talking about. I think that's a little uh, less common on these affiliate type of sites than it's going to be on a standard blog, for example. So in that regard, um, even with um, some of the best of my Amazon affiliate sites where I actually left commenting enabled thinking, hey, I have, you know, a couple hundred visitors a day all coming from targeted search engine uh, rankings. 
there should be somebody there leaving decent comments and all I did was just found myself clicking deny 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 all day long um, and then like once a month or something I'd actually get uh, something useful somebody saying thank you for the information and, and even then it's still 50 50 whether it's actually a real comment or still just another one of those uh, spam comments because they still provide some type of website address uh, even as even if it's not within their actual comment itself um, so yeah for I just I just avoid them altogether um, at least with this type of website now if you have already created some type of content on a site and uh, you come in here and you click this checkbox to disable the comments this will not actually do anything with your existing uh, content on your site to uh, close down the comments you would need to go in and edit each individual uh, page or post and actually specify down at the bottom um, to not allow comments or you need to click this checkbox right here and uh, I simply just set it to older than zero days which will uh, make it automatically close comments on any of the articles that are already in existence on the website so I save my changes for this uh, and this automatically shuts down commenting throughout my whole website now the other thing I'm going for here yes uh, you're right too will uh, simplifies database load you know every time you have somebody posting those spam comments to your site you know that is using a process uh, in your control panel to save that information to your database um, whereas you can simply deny them outright it would still use a process from them trying uh, to attempt that assuming that the attempt is still made like if they still attempt to post uh, their comment information to uh, a script on your site to have it processed then um, that load would still be occurred but then instead of saving that information every time it just simply uh, shuts it down at that point so that it can definitely uh, reduce database load in that regard which will make your sites faster to load and it's you never want to bog down a site more than you have to um, because the faster a site loads uh, the better Google will end up liking it if you could completely duplicate two sites and still have Google consider them equally uh, the site that would rank the best would be the one on a faster server uh, with a faster connection because it would simply load quicker and if everything else across the board was the same um, that should be enough to bump one site over the next um, however beyond that it's, it's hard to say how much they may actually take site loading speed into account when it comes to uh, your rankings now um, in these permalink settings here uh, there is the default setting up here which uh, makes your site pages show up like this if you notice at the end you have a question mark the letter P an equal sign and then a number this is actually uh, a variable that is representing uh, the page number in WordPress well this doesn't mean anything to anybody viewing uh, this website address like a real person um, and it also doesn't mean anything to Google uh, or other search engines and in fact sometimes they can completely ignore this type of thing and uh, just assume that all of the different uh, page numbers that might be linked to on a particular site it might just think it is all this one web page um, so very important to make sure that you have post names selected and this just simply makes the uh, URL titled after whatever you title your particular um, 
post that you're creating. And you can still edit this on any given page. This just helps you get it um, set up in the best way possible, and then you can make changes from there. Uh, I actually have a few um, instances where I like to make some changes uh, on particular pages of my site. Um, you know, over the the way that WordPress actually sets up those titles for me by default. Um, so obviously, I'll be I'll be getting to some more. And as far as all these permalink settings goes, um, when I actually get around to uh, beginning construction on this site. Now, um, the next thing that I need to do um, this website. In general, or in terms of uh, the settings and the initial cleanup work, uh, the site is pretty much ready to go. So all I really need to do now is to install additional software that I might want to use on the site. Now, the first thing that I'm trying to do here is to uh, actually install my my WordPress theme. Hey, um, can you guys can you guys still hear me? Okay, out there, I just got a little notification on my end that um, audio quality could be degraded or something a little bit. Okay, okay, good to good to know. <laughs> wow, that's quite a flood. Thank you, thank you, all of you guys. Uh, Alice, Pamela, Gail, Will, Nicole, Linda, Rhonda, Martin, Stan, Chris. John, <laughs> thank you, thank you, everybody. Um, uh, that concerned me. I'd never Aunt Randy and George. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you guys are funny. Uh, you sure make these these fun. Um, you know, uh, it's it's. I, I enjoy teaching this type of information, but um. Uh, a lot of you guys that are that are in this Amazon class are are quite the lively bunch. Um, so you know, thank you. Uh, <laughs> makes it makes it even more enjoyable for me. Um, okay, so so what I'm looking to do now is to install my WordPress theme. Um, by default, uh, there is a 2013 theme. Now, they keep changing this particular theme. Uh, each year they seem to um, update it and create it with something new, and it just it seems to keep getting more and more out there in a way. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think, more intended for bloggers to use. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Linda and Will, as always. <laughs> um, Post name are for post and custom structure are for pages. Um, the the post name applies to both uh, post and pages. Actually, the custom structure applies to um, tags and categories. I believe. Uh, yeah, you're. Oh no, wait. You're talking about up here. Oh, I see what you're talking about. This is actually if you. If you select any one of these up above here, you can see that it changes um, what's being shown down in the custom structure here. Um, so what's actually being used is the, uh, I believe it's just the custom structure every time um, for both post, post and pages. You made me start to second guess myself. <laughs> Um, yes, yes, they should they should both uh, be the same. However, posts and pages can end up changing if you use um, category and base tags. However, I don't I don't use posts on my sites. Um, I just use the pages. So uh, I guess it's really not something that I find myself too concerned with. Um, however, next week when I'm going through WordPress, I will be uh, showing you guys both posts and pages and categories and you know everything that's there just so I can 
uh, so you know how it all works and so I can explain to you um, why I build my sites the way that I build them too. Okay, so um, getting back to the, uh, the themes here, um, 2013 is going to be installed by default. However, I like to use a, a particular theme that is called Weaver 2. This is completely free. You can find this by simply searching for it uh, through WordPress right here. Now, um, this is still set up on this site, even though there's a brand new site. I guess when I uninstalled WordPress, it didn't wipe out my custom uh, theme and plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off here. This is what it should look like on a default site. I think they still include 2012 uh, with WordPress, if I'm not mistaken. I know for a while it seemed like they were including 2012 and the previous 2011 um, with, uh, you know, the most recent one being activated. I guess so people that were used to using the previous theme uh, so they could continue to use it um, if it was something that they preferred to use. <clears throat> However, I'm not looking to use either of these. I want to use uh, Weaver. So I just simply go over to install themes here and I search for the Weaver theme. And it uh, shows up as the only choice if you type in the keyword Weaver to search. So I'm going to install this theme on my site now and go ahead and click on the activate button. And uh, you can see over here on the left hand side that my appearance menu has changed now. I have uh, some additional links here. Weaver 2 Admin, which is actually the current page that I'm on. And uh, this has a whole bunch of different options for this theme. You can change almost anything about it. Uh, the different colors that are located uh, for uh, backgrounds, border colors, text colors, um, really every little detail of it um, for the most part, can be uh, customized to your liking. <clears throat> However, before you go through all these options and start customizing, start over here on the Weaver 2 sub-themes page. And uh, scroll down. You can pick from any of these different overall looks. And then if there are particular uh, aspects about the site that you want to um, change and fine-tune, if you don't like a particular color, for example, then you can simply uh, work off of one of these examples. But I will often try to look at these and try to pick one that um, is going to be the closest uh, fit to what I might be looking to achieve. So um, the one that I find myself using the most often is actually 2011 Lite. Uh, this is similar to the 2011 theme uh, that was included with WordPress. However, it's um, it's it's a little lighter in my opinion. It's not um, it doesn't have like a huge space for a header image, and um, I just it it's it's basic and uh, good to use to build off of. Um, that and uh, it's white overall. I like to keep my sites uh, plain, especially the Amazon affiliate sites. You could spend um, a lot of time, you know, making them look uh, all cutesy and stuff, which can work for certain purposes. However, um, for the average site where you, you know, you want the people to focus primarily on your content, I try not to distract them with uh, other stuff like uh, a flashy design on my site. So I'll keep it plain and simple and let my content be the hero. Um, so for this reason, I go with uh, 2011 Lite, but you know, feel free to take a look through all these different sub-themes that are available and uh, see which one you like the best. Now, once you have selected your sub-theme, then you can go back in and make all of your um, fine-tuning adjustments to it. 
because if you go through and you start changing colors and then you go and select a new sub theme, uh, it will simply wipe out um, any of the, the uh, changes that you have made. So um, start with your sub theme first and, and then uh, work from there. Now under main options here, um, each of these different parts, you can kind of access a different portion of your web page uh, to change the way that it looks. You have headers, menu, your content area, uh, links. Um, one of them in particular that I want to go to for just a moment is the footer. Um, I actually want to get rid of the uh, powered by notice. This just says that it's um, uh, powered by WordPress and, and also Weaver 2. And I believe there are a total of two links that are um, in the footer of, uh, you know, throughout the entire public website that are uh, outgoing links. So I simply don't want those there because this will decrease my uh, ranking power and actually send some of it off to WordPress and some of it off to uh, the Weaver website. So by simply checking this box down here and saving my changes, then uh, it completely wipes out that powered by notice. Technically, this should be disabled by default according to um, rules in the uh, um, WordPress repository in terms of uh, when, you, when you host a theme or a plug in there. Um, you're not supposed to have these powered by notices enabled by default. Um, that's really my one uh, complaint with Weaver 2. But beyond that, it's really a great uh, theme, especially considering it doesn't cost a penny. Tons of options that you can customize. There are certain options that says are for the pro version only, but I have seriously uh, years and years of using Weaver 2. I've actually been using it since it was Weaver, uh, just Weaver. Um, I've never used the pro version uh, because the uh, theme has always allowed me to do what I've wanted to do without these additional um, pro version upgrades. So I, uh, I simply stick with the free version. And I think for building these Amazon affiliate sites, it's, um, it's, it's exactly what I need for that type of purpose. Um, now, in addition to all these other settings here, uh, I have a couple of other links over here. Uh, the header and the background, these can be used to change the header image and or the background image that is used with uh, this particular theme. Um, just to show you here, if I flip over to the public web page, um, I have this big piano image as a, a header. And obviously, this has nothing to do with down comforters, so um, it'd be pretty pointless um, and confusing, in fact, to leave that up there. So I want to go over to the header link right here, which allows me to do something about this particular image. Now, I could select one of these other default images that are available. Um, it's not a huge selection. There's only eight of them. but uh, it may work for partic particular uh, types of websites, for example. Um, for Down Comforter Guide, unless I just want to offer a serene and peaceful looking header image or something, uh, none of these really fit with my particular niche. Um, <laughs> oh, Will, that's, um, <laughs> Will, Will says I should pick the the one with the ocean birds because they have down feathers. <laughs> uh, okay, that's 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 a very observant and great suggestion. Um, however, that might put off the wrong um, <laughs> um, impression that I that I would probably be going for on the site. I don't want want people to be thinking about. Uh, live birds in in their comforters while they're you know looking at uh, 
uh, my website. So for this particular website, um, I will simply be removing my header image. I'm just going to leave it blank. Now, uh, when I go back to my public web page and refresh it, it simply removes it. So now I just have my blog title up here, which is actually a link to the home page of this website. And then I have the tagline showing up immediately below it. So I've stripped down this entire site down to its uh, basic essentials and uh, also gotten it um, set up to be ready for my uh, first usage. Now, beyond, um, uh, that, that's, a, that's a good point too, Rhonda. Um, Rhonda's asking, why don't I find an appropriate image? I, I could. Um, I may choose to spend some time to look for an image off of Google. Um, just to show you, for example, if you did want to pick um, why did I type in GoDaddy? If you did want to pick a uh, image to use, all you'd have to do is go over to Google Images um, and then search for uh, your product, for example. But then, obviously, you wouldn't want to just grab any image that's out there available and remake it into um what would essentially be construed as your your logo for your website. Um, so in terms of using it as the header image and what might be viewed as being uh, the logo for the site, I try to be very careful when it comes to um, uh, copyright infringement. Um, over here in these settings, um, I go down to advanced search and uh, all the way at the bottom, you can change the licensing on them. Now, as you change the licensing and make it even more restrictive, um, it's simply going to reduce the number of, uh, of results. Now, it's, it's a little bit of a gray ter territory here in terms of which of these four you should use. Technically, this could maybe be considered a commercial purpose. Um, it could also technically be considered uh, modifying it if you're adding um, your own text as an overlay to it, for example. Um, so I will typically search for at least this one and sometimes even this last particular option. Change uh, my particular search and then the results that I am provided with here could uh, technically be used. Um, it's just a question of whether you can find something that will work along with your site or not um, and whether it, it looks halfway decent. Um, let's see, Nancy, Nancy is asking, could we just use an Amazon image? You can, again, you can use an Amazon image. Um, however, uh, you know, using it as your logo essentially um, color if I edit color cut out and so on there is no problem then for um, for you're talking about with these images Nicole if you uh, if you edit these yes as long as you looked for um, uh, the uh, the settings and change the uh, the licensing selection on them. I guess there's no guarantee that Google has it right in terms of the licensing for the pictures. Um, sometimes you may find one that uh, is listed here, and it might ask you to attribute, um, you know, uh, them as the the original. Um, owner or copyright holder or something. Um, anything off of like uh, Wikipedia, for example, you can actually use um, images off of Wikipedia as long as you um, provide a, I believe it's a link and a little statement that goes along with it. Um, so, you know, just be careful about what images you're using and where they're coming from and just, you know, um, 
Yes, yes, uh, Creative Commons, Alice. Uh, Wiki, everything on Wikipedia is released under cre Creative Commons. Uh, I, I believe at least most of their images. <laughs> um, now, you know, obviously getting into like graphics editing and stuff, I do um, Photoshop. Um, I actually went to college for uh, computer animation. So um, Photoshop is something I do, but I didn't want to try to bust out Photoshop and uh, try to teach you guys how to do it. That and um, it's not entirely cheap uh, to use Photoshop legally either. Um, so I don't want to try to talk you guys into doing something um, expensive. But I guess the main point is here that with these Amazon affiliate sites, um, you don't you don't have to put you know a ton of effort um, into into something like that. Uh, let's see, John. Um, I've I have heard of that theme, Socrates theme. However, I I don't think I have used it myself. I do test a lot of different products. Um, I'm I cannot recall uh, testing that particular one. Um, so I don't have any any thoughts on it. Um, in in at least probably in the regards that you're that you're looking for. Um. If uh, if you would like to uh, set up, you know, a, a basic version of it, um, and uh, just email me a link to uh, your site when you have that installed, um, you know, I'd be happy to to take a a quick look at it. Okay, there's I have one one comment here for you. Um, John, um, Linda, Linda is saying that many do use Socrates for Amazon sites, and that she used it a little bit. She feels like there's more of a learning curve with Socrates than there is with Weaver, though. Um, thank you, um, thank you, Linda, for that. By the way. Yeah, now if you have um you know, if you happen to have any of these products or whatever, take take pictures with your own camera um and and use them. Um, you know, uh you're guaranteed for your images to be unique. Um and uh, personally I I have seen uh a halfway decent amount of traffic coming through Google Images to my Amazon affiliate sites when I have uh, unique images that I've created for them. Um, it it can a lot of times just depend on whether um, you can take a, a picture of something that you know goes along with your subject matter or not, and um, you know whether you want to have backgrounds on those images, uh, for example. Um, See, uh, Will Will is saying Inkscape is cool, and Bernie Pix Pixlr P I X L R is free. I have not tried uh, those. I believe one one of those is sounding familiar though. Um, let's see, John. Uh, in case you needed uh, uh, a particular place to contact me uh, with that with that uh, link if you do want to send that to me. Um, just send it to Ryan at RyanStevensonPlugins.com. Um, okay, let's see. Will Will wants me to backtrack here. Um, right here, Will, um, this little, uh, I don't know why they use this, this gear, it's a settings uh, icon. Um, I've seen a lot of different sites using that for their settings icon. Um, go down to advanced search and then uh, all the way down here at the bottom. 
you can uh, select from a variety of different usage rights here to search with. You're quite welcome. Let's see, lend a thesis also in addition to Socrates. I guess is uh, something she's saying is commonly used, but she feels like both are a little more complicated uh, and Weaver is a little easier. <laughs> oh, it's it's night now and raining. It's so hard to take some pictures. Um, let's see. Can can you photograph a brand object and then and then change it? Um, like, are you saying if you if you own that product, um, I think you you can photograph the product itself. I guess you wouldn't want to show uh, perhaps the brand name in the product if you're or in the photograph um, if you're planning on using it for a logo at least um, for for any other purposes um, if you're just taking pictures uh, you know like let's say for example you're you're building a site about a particular type of product that you already own at home you know by all means take Take pictures of those products um, and put them. Yeah, yeah, you you can do that. Uh, buy a product, make a photo, and then change it uh, with Photoshop. In terms of, well, I guess, what do you mean by changing it? Um, like removing um, the brand name word off of it, for example, uh, digitally? Is that what you're talking about, Nicole? Okay. Yeah. Um, that that should be fine to do for for um, a logo as long as there's nothing you know in it that can identify it um, as being you know a particular brand. Um, then yeah, I mean that 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 sounds like it would be just fine. I've done I've done things like that with more general um, type of stuff like. You know, if you're making anything pet related, for example, make any kind of dog accessory related type of website, go take a picture of your dog. You know, go take a picture of your cat if you're making a cat website. Um, so it wouldn't even necessarily have to be the product itself. Something that relates to it in one way or another could also be used. Um, now, uh, let's see, I, I've got a little bit more that... Um, I'm planning on covering tonight, guys, and uh, this is actually going to involve. Uh, you're quite welcome, Nicole. Uh, good, good questions too. Um, I'm going to be uh, doing the last part of this initial website setup here, and this actually involves my initial plugin setup. Now. Obviously, all of you have um, my Amazon plugins that we will be using for this site when it comes time to do the advertising. Um, but uh, the intention of this part of uh, this lesson is is not to actually go through the installation and setup of those plugins because when I when I actually go through talking about my plugins, um, I believe that's going to be in in the ninth class of this series, um, that entire class is going to be devoted to those plugins. So I actually want to be able to, you know, dive into each of them more in depth than just simply uh, installing them on the website uh, real quick and moving along. Um, we won't actually be adding the advertising to this website until. Uh, the website is constructed, and you know we we reach that particular lesson. Uh, so there's no need to have uh, the advertising plugins here on the site at this point, at least. So uh, the intention of this uh, portion of tonight's class is to simply talk about uh, default plugins that I like to use on the site, especially the free plugins that are available within WordPress. 
Now to find these, just go to plugins and go down to add new. Um, and then all you have to do is search for the plugin here. Now, um, one in particular that I'm actually going to uh, install on this website, and it's one that I install on all of my websites, is called SEO Ultimate. Um, this controls all of the basic um, back-end SEO stuff for uh, the site. Um, and it's really stuff that um, WordPress has not really included. Um, so it's, it's definitely necessary stuff that doesn't already exist in WordPress, but um, needs to be there. So uh, this is one reason why no matter what kind of site I'm building, I always use this one particular plugin. And all you have to do is just type in SEO Ultimate uh, to search for it, and it should come up first in the list, and just click on Install Now, and uh, then activate it on the site. Now, a lot of people will use All-in-One SEO uh, instead of SEO Ultimate. If you're familiar with All-in-One SEO and you like it, uh, feel free to go ahead and use that one instead of SEO Ultimate. This is just um, the one that I've, I, I have always used for as long as I can really remember using either one of the two of them. Um, so it's just simply my personal preference, and uh, I've never had issues in terms of getting decent search rankings using the plugin on my sites. Um, so, you know, if it's not broken, then don't fix it. So I've never really tried. Um, using all-in-one SEO in-depth uh, like I have this particular plugin. Um, now in that regard, uh, just because I'm only installing this one plugin here tonight doesn't necessarily mean that that may be the only thing that you uh, will want to be installing on your site. If there is something uh, particular that you might be going for on your site, for example, if you wanted to have a section of your website that had something special on it that isn't normally available within WordPress, like let's say you wanted some type of um, JavaScript image gallery or something on a page of your site, then you know by all means search for a plugin that can help you to accomplish uh, that particular uh, goal that you may be looking to achieve on the site. Um, I do this all the time on my sites. I always will look for a free plugin that I might be able to uh, start using. Um, obviously, I have a little bit of an advantage over the average person because I can pick a plugin that's simply close to what I want and then uh, go into the code and change it around so it works exactly how I want it to. However, even without having the ability to do that, um, I could still go in and find relevant plugins to use for a variety of different purposes on uh, these Amazon affiliate sites. If you uh, ever have the desire to use PHP coding on a site, like uh, install the exec EXEC PHP uh, plugin, I use that all the time. What is the code in HTML? Five, Rhonda is asking um, the the plugin code. It it's um it should be heavily PHP coding uh, for all WordPress plugins, and then um, beyond uh, the PHP coding, you will have HTML and CSS in there that controls the the uh, public parts of the plugin that actually get seen, um, but then all, all the back-end workings that actually controls the plugin itself um, will typically be all PHP coding. So you, unless you know all of that and also have some experience with WordPress plugin development, um, it, it can definitely be hard to actually try to edit them yourself unless you have that type of knowledge. 
Um, I guess I guess you weren't here beginning of tonight, or you will. Um, I I deleted Jetpack. That's what I think of it. <laughs> um, no, seriously though, I it's it's okay. I mean it. It offers WordPress.com features. However, it needs like it needs a live connection to it, and obviously, it's working with that system. So, I see it as something unnecessary that's uh, going to slow my site down more. Um, so, I uh, I don't use it. Um, it it allows you to integrate with a WordPress.com account. So your blog can have the features that are normally found on WordPress.com blogs. However, WordPress.com blogs are um, restrictive um, in, in a lot of ways, but they do have some features that are not found in the self-hosted WordPress. However, uh, I, don't, I don't find myself um, in need of those particular features, so I don't, I don't bother with using Jetpack. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I uh, delete it. Um, do you also use something which shows the website is under construction because it's not possible to finish all? That's that's a good point, Nicole. Um, when you're when you're building your site, Nicole is asking if you show uh, something that says your website is under construction or not. Um, Typically, as long as as long as you're building your sites, I guess in a way that I recommend uh, to build them, um, and aren't waiting too long uh, between um, all of your steps in creating, you know, getting the entire site completed. I don't think there's a need for that. I actually live like to leave my websites open and accessible even while. Um, I'm constructing them because uh, when it comes to Google and them indexing your websites, it doesn't all happen overnight. If you just like, if I were to go in here right now and immediately create 20 pages on my site and paste all of my content from, say, a Notepad file on my computer into those 20 pages, I could have a completed site uh, built perhaps in 30 minutes or less uh, if I just rushed through it all. But then when it came to uh, Google attempting to index those 20 pages, it could take potentially weeks uh, or even longer for that to happen because Google will start by landing on your homepage and then it will look at your homepage content and index it. And then it will look at, uh, okay, what links are on this page? And then it will go through not necessarily those links one at a time. It actually randomly selects links and uh, randomly crawls through your site. But it's not going to go through the entire site all in one fail swoop. It might land on the home page, click on this link, look at this page, click on another link, land on another page of your site, which then exits off to Amazon. And then Google might not come back and index additional pages of your site, you know, until the week after or something. Um, so in that regard, I try to uh, put my content out there as I'm making it and simply allow Google to uh, get that content in indexed as it can uh, do so. Um, I kind of feel like I will end up doing it, uh, getting it all completed and constructed before Google will have it all indexed. However, when I'm done, at least some of it should already be indexed, and uh, it gives me a little bit of a head start um, on getting those search rankings, I feel like. Uh, Go, Go Mobile type of plugins, Will? You're talking about plugins that turn your your normal WordPress site into like a mobile compatible version okay um you have to be really really careful with those and Amazon affiliate websites um, I will I 
let me make myself a note of this, and I will actually track down the exact wording of it. There is something specific. No, no, there's something particular in uh, the Amazon affiliate terms of service um, that that uh, talks about that, Will. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to miss, uh, misquote that. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to make myself a note of that. Um, no, no, I don't think you really need it. And it's, and it's something that, that dips into potential area with Amazon where they may not like it. So, and it, when it comes to that type of stuff, I just recommend to avoid it completely. Um, let's see, uh, Nicole's asking, is it not better to post two articles after days again and so on to see, so Google can see that I'm, you know, working on it or whatever? Yeah, I mean, if it is better if, if you're building your site in a more natural way, like, um, I wouldn't want to, if, if I were to use outsourcing, for example, and let's say I hired some guy to write 20 pages of content for my sites, which I don't do. I write it all myself, but you know, if I were to do it that way, or if I were to just write my content separately, um, which I'm actually going to have to do for this particular, um, series because like uh, two weeks from now I will start building content on this site for you guys live but obviously um, within the course of uh, I think it's about four hours or so uh, worth of webinars where I will actually be constructing the pages and the content of the site itself um, not including stuff like advertising though um, it's just not enough time for me to write all that content, so I'm, I will have to write all the content for this site ahead of time. I will be writing it personally because um, I don't do any kind of outsourcing at all. But when it comes to posting it on the site, yes, you are correct. You want to post it out. Um, space it out if you can. You know, uh, post an article. Uh, one day and then come back the next day and post another article and then come back the day following and uh, post another one and you know working like that if you're doing that as you're writing out your content then you know it should be pretty natural you won't be publishing 20 pages worth of content all on the same day or within a couple of hours or whatever um, so yeah, Google Google does like to see sites built more naturally, which which is another disadvantage um, for um, for sites that are using purely automated content. <laughs> Do I know a good translator for English for which which other language? I guess to translate into into English from. Oh, from from German to English. Um, hmm. No, I mean those the automatic translators are obviously not that great. Um, translate to Canadian. <laughs> Stan says translate to Canadian. <laughs> um, the uh. The translators, like if you use uh, Google Translate, for example, um, if you if you use something like Google Translate to take your your German writing and um, convert it into English, for example, then you could take that automatic translation and have somebody review the automatic translation and make some corrections to it instead of just doing a full-on translation from German to English by hand. Um, it would definitely make it a lot cheaper if you had to have a real person do it. Um, let's see, George, George here says he's done German into English in the past. I would like to write them by my own. Yeah, I mean, do you ever, 
Yeah, that's that's a good point too. Um, Linda um, use Google Chrome has a built-in translator. Actually, um, now that you mention it, Linda, I use Google Chrome um, not very heavily, but for particular things, um, I I will rely upon it. And actually, one situation where I recommend using uh, Google Chrome is for um, signing up for the foreign Amazon affiliate sites. Uh, if you for example, if you want to have um, a website that automatically promotes your products depending upon um, where your website visitors live, then um, you would need to be registered with each of the different Amazon affiliate sites. However, all of them except for uh, Amazon.com and UK and Canada the rest of them aren't in English, and that even applies to uh, the applications for those affiliate programs and the uh, back-end parts of the sites. Um, so I recommend uh, to people to use Google Chrome um, and that built-in translator when you're applying to the foreign Amazon affiliate programs, and you can you know, get it to automatically translate all those questions for you on the page makes it much, much easier to uh, go through that application process. Um, so yeah, I guess, uh, Nicole, with the whole translation thing, were you were you more interested in, in an automated solution, I guess, or are you actually looking for um, somebody to do that for you? Um, yeah, Gail, you could, you know, always go and look for somebody through, uh, Odesk. Yeah, you're, you are right, George, the machine translations are very unreliable. Um, I found you can, like, if I, if I take normal writing of mine and translate it into another language and then try to translate it back, it even ends up getting messed up. Uh, horribly, just that way, just translating it back and forth one time. Um, if if you have any interest, uh, uh, Nicole, if you are looking for a real person to do German to English translations, and if uh, if George, you have any interest in doing that, I I wouldn't have any problem uh, connecting you two guys. Uh, together, if you would like, if you would, you know, are are both cool with that. Um, I definitely won't won't take it upon myself to to do that upon my, for myself. Um, if if you either of you do have an interest in that, just let me know. I could. Okay, I I I thought that may have been what you were saying, George. No, George George is not for hire. Sorry, sorry, Nicole. <laughs> I guess he was just saying he has he has done that translation uh, before. Any any recommendations? I suppose George. <laughs> right, Linda. The automatic translations, while they're not great, you can you can usually. Uh, uh, figure out what it's trying to say, perhaps, but but you are Nicole. In in that regard, you know, you you don't want to have a site that's obviously going to um, uh, target uh, Americans, for example, um, and you know, be English, but maybe not great or proper English. Um, at least in in my opinion, you know, when I will notice a site like that, um, the 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 bad English will often stand out. Um, so I do I do recommend trying to avoid that. But if you if you find yourself in a position where maybe you're not able to put together an English based site without having to put down, um, 
you know, money for the translation that might not be cheap. Um, uh, let's see, Linda recommends Fiverr.com, and, and George says uh, for a good translation, negotiate the translation company. Um, but, you know, if you're not looking to go through that type of um, process and, and that extra expense, maybe try finding um, something uh, German-based that you could actually target to begin with. Um, find a niche uh, in the German language that perhaps uh, only exists in that particular language. Um, I know that there are products in certain parts of the world that just simply aren't common or maybe don't exist at all in other parts of the world, like um, here in the United States, for example. So uh, you may want to try to focus on some uh, some uh, German niches, perhaps, at least uh, to begin with, if, if those expenses of translating are not uh, realistic for you. Um, uh, with uh, with F SEO Ultimate here, um, yeah, taking school books. That would, yeah, true. Yeah, you could you could try to learn some uh, additional English, I guess. If 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 I think that's what you're referring to. I guess that might be a cheaper alternative. <laughs> Get a, what's that, Rosetta Stone. <laughs> they want to teach three million people a new language this year. You can be one of them. <laughs> um, okay, um, getting, getting back to this, I've got a little bit more to cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I hear that commercial all the time, George. <laughs> Um, with with SEO Ultimate here, there's there's one particular thing that um, I'm looking to do with this uh, plugin, um, at least by default. Uh, this title tag rewriter right here, all the way at the end of each of these pages, you can see this little blog tag with uh, curly brackets surrounding it. Um, it occurs on every single line here on this whole page, except for this uh, last one, actually. What I want to do is remove that blog tag, and I also want to remove uh, the space and uh, the keystroke character, which is this little uh, line right here, and then the space on the other side of that as well. And what this is doing is it is removing the blog title from uh, the title of each of the pages throughout my website. My reason for doing this is uh, my target keyword phrase is down comforter guide, so this is my blog title. So I don't necessarily want this to be repeated in the title of every single page um, throughout this website. Um, why don't I find a do a find and replace? Um, I don't know. It's just not that many. Well, because this first one up here, I actually want to keep this one. Um, this blog homepage title. This is actually for the homepage itself. I don't know because it's only what's that? Maybe ten different ones that I have to delete like that, uh, Rhonda. So I just I just do it manually. Um. Remove it from all of them except for uh, this very first one, and uh, save your changes. And this simply keeps um, the page titles of each of the pages throughout my site, um, whatever I assign as the page titles, instead of trying to add some additional information in my site title on to the end of it. Um, now, if if you are going for, um, I know at least some of you out there are intending on using more of a branded uh, domain name that you have come up with instead of a uh, primary keyword phrase as your domain name. Um, if that is the case, if, if you have some type of unique name uh, for your website, 
then you may not need to do this particular step. I am doing this particular step because I want to reduce the likelihood of uh, being picked up for keyword spam, especially with my primary keyword phrase, down comforter. So I don't necessarily want that phrase on every single page throughout my site because my site is already going to be relevant to that phrase. So I don't need to keep repeating the same words over and over again. Um, so this, this one change is the main thing that I'm looking to do with uh, SEO Ultimate right after setting it up. If you use a variety of other plugins to um, perform different tasks for you on the site, uh, you can go through and enable or disable particular uh, modules within this um, plugin here, which is one of the reasons why I kind of like using it. Um, for example, um, there's a plugin that I sometimes use if I need to uh, gauge the uh, keyword density of um, my articles that I'm writing. You can uh, download a plugin for free through WordPress called uh, Keyword Statistics, and it will actually uh, calculate your keyword densities and tell you your most frequently used words and give you counts and percentages and all that other kind of stuff. But that plugin also will try to generate a title tag and it will also try to generate meta keywords and a meta description and the meta robots tag. Um, so you don't want to have two plugins that are doing the same exact thing. Um, when it comes to this type of stuff, because you can have the same type of HTML tag output twice on your public site, each with a different value, and if you're depending upon uh, search engines picking up this information to try to help with your rankings, um, then you obviously don't want to have two different versions on the same page that might actually um, conflict with each other or be different from each other. In, in one way or another. Um, so this this uh, modules page is great to use to um, get it to play nicely with uh, other plugins that you might want to use on your site. Or if you have a theme, for example, that maybe already does this type of thing for you, um, you know, you can disable that through uh, this page and just let the other plugin or a theme handle it. Um, Now, uh, next week, guys, like I was talking to you about at uh, the beginning of tonight's class, um, I'm going to be still talking about WordPress next week. I want to actually go through and show you guys how to use it and um, even show you some of the parts to WordPress that may not be commonly used, but... Um, are still important features that perhaps I find myself using at some time or another uh, while I'm building my sites or even just maintaining my sites. So I want to not only make sure that you guys can put your website together, but I actually want you to know uh, how to use WordPress itself. I know um, me and uh, Will were talking about this uh, earlier in the week, I believe. So we'll next week, um, it's all about it's all about learning WordPress next week. Um, and then the week after that, guys, we will be actually uh, building the real uh, website starting week after next. Um, so we're getting very, very close here. Um, before next week, just try to get your domain name set up and um, get WordPress installed on it and go ahead and get WordPress set up um, how I have uh, covered for you guys tonight and then you can actually um, use it to uh, to learn on next week um, before we actually start building our site. Um, Yes, Rhonda. Let's see, Rhonda is asking, are you going to teach us how to design sites? Um, to a certain extent, yes, I will be. Um, let me show you an example.
here's a site, uh, dog crate sizes that, um, I built in 2010, I believe. Um, it still has a, a number one or, or potentially a number two search ranking for its main keyword phrase to this day. Um, this type of design in this is actually in the content of um, my home page right here. These different um, charts of information that I've set up. But as you can see, these actually link up to other parts of my site. Um, I do something similar to this in one way or another on most of my Amazon affiliate sites. And so in this regard, I will be teaching um, a, a couple of different examples of uh, HTML coding and along with a little bit of CSS coding that is used to um, design up the site in this regard. It's not going to be incredibly in-depth or complicated type of stuff. Um, I'm not going to, you know, be getting to um, trying to teach everything about designing sites, obviously, because there's there's a lot um, uh, revolving that. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can send you a message here, Rhonda. Okay. Um I sent you a I sent you a link, Rhonda. Um feel free to go there. And uh, I don't know if you may or may not have already had access to that, but um you can uh get some HTML and CSS basic knowledge um from there. Uh which, you know, it will go into the designing aspect and I'll be teaching um, some of this stuff over the next, uh, not next week, but, but the two weeks following that. Um, but if, if, uh, for, and for anybody else out there that may not, uh, be, have a lot of confidence in doing site design stuff like this, if you, if you don't know how to do the HTML and CSS type of stuff when, uh, when we reach that, please, please just let me know and, um, I have some material that I can uh, send you to help you with that type of knowledge. Um, material, material I've I've put together. I let's see. I, I think I think you may already have it. Yes. Uh, yeah. The I'm talking about the uh, Techie Masterclass. Uh, the the HTML and the CSS ebook and video for that particular class. Um, those two was that number number two and number three in that series. Um, those two would um, would be the uh, the best ones to uh, try to wrap your head around in terms of uh, learning coding to um, do the website design type of stuff. Um, again, you know, all, all still fairly basic type of designing, but um, uh, you're, you're very welcome, uh, Gail. Um, yes, uh, feel, feel free to go back through those previous training sessions. Um, if you do have any questions um, on that, Gail, please feel free to uh, reply to me. Um, through uh, the email. Um, I believe I emailed you earlier today, if I'm not mistaken, with um, uh, the, the plug-in download links uh, that came along with this. Um, feel free to just reply to me there if you do have some questions with uh, those previous um, sessions. Uh, be more than happy to help you out there since uh, you were not um, around for those. Uh, 
yes, uh, you're quite welcome, Gail. Uh, thank you as well for uh, for joining up with me here. Um, I will be showing how to link together the categories and articles like like I've done here um, on on this dog crate sizes page. Uh, I will be showing how I accomplish this and um, give you some example coding for that that you can use and and I'll also try to teach you uh, how it works and and some of the basics so you so you could edit that um, and reuse it on your own sites here so yeah I won't I won't and in regards to stuff like this I won't uh, throw you guys to the wolves um, I will definitely be trying to either teach you or provide you with working and or editable examples uh, that you can use for for the uh, the more complicated aspects of building um, a site like this and obviously that's not necessary you could still build the site without this type of stuff but um, you know I'm trying to make my sites not look like the average website especially not the average uh, affiliate website so I try to do a little bit of design work um, for my sites to you know break up the monot monotony of, of just uh, these these plain old um, articles for example the yeah I, I do my are you talking about like the um, the image up here for the header Nicole are you talking about the okay no I didn't actually um, I, I do not uh, any more own uh, dogcratesizes.com if you actually were to look up the registering information um, this is no longer my website um, actually sold off a uh, decent handful of my Amazon affiliate sites and late 2010 early 2011 so right as I was getting started up um, as a WordPress plugin developer um, I kind of saw an opportunity um, and and also a demand uh, I started sharing my Amazon sites with other um, with other customers uh, not not customers of mine just people on uh, on the warrior forum actually and um, it it grew into something larger. People liked the designing that I did, the way that I built my sites, and also the uh, the style of advertising that I used. But it was all people were saying, "Well, you know, how did you do that? What plugin did you use, or whatever?" And I'm just like, I I didn't use a plugin. I I you know custom made it myself and. Um, so a lot of people were like, well, you know, if you were to ever develop that into a plugin, I'd buy it. And so I'm just like, well, um, I've I've been I had been doing program uh, PHP programming for over ten years at that point. So I was just like, why not? Uh, so make a WordPress plugin. And so um, I sold off. I still have uh, Amazon sites, but I did sell off uh, a number of my sites to. Uh, give me a little bit of um, leeway room there, time to work on my plugins, and and still I'm I'm the sole provider for um, my entire family, um, married with three children, so uh, my wife is a stay-at-home mom. Um, so you know I couldn't simply say, hey, I'm going to stop doing this job and start trying to do this job and uh, not make any money for a couple of months. So um, I needed I needed some uh, extra startup cash, so I sold off a bunch of my sites. But this site alone, just to give you a, a estimate of you know, you guys can instead of building sites and keeping them for the monthly income, you can build sites and sell them off as you build them uh, for a larger payday. This one website alone um, sold for uh, three thousand dollars. And uh, obviously was probably worth every penny of it, um, 
<laughs> still got a still got a number one ranking to this day. <laughs> a bonus class on site marketing with Pinterest. You know, Rhonda, I'm probably a little embarrassed to say, but my wife, I think, knows more about Pinterest than I do. She she uses Pinterest every single day, and I've I've only used it a couple times. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Linda. Um, I uh, I really appreciate all of your uh, your comments and. And enthusiasm, and, and and all of your uh, questions and information that you've you've shared tonight as well, uh, very very much appreciated. I'm glad you uh, enjoy the the whole process, and uh, glad you found tonight helpful. Uh, thank you, thank you very much too, Nicole. Um, I appreciate all of your uh, comments. You've been a very very active tonight and I like active active and in the coaching program makes you know me feel like you're paying attention and into what I'm teaching and and you know obviously soaking it up and and learning from it too so uh, makes me makes me excited about it too thank you thank you guys uh, Alice uh, thank you Alice um, and Rhonda and Bernie Stan John uh, all of you for your comments. I uh, hope you all have a great night. And um, yeah, a good uh, a good holiday. Um, for for those of you that may not have been in the live webinar last week, or perhaps haven't watched the recording from last week, um, we discovered that uh, next week's session is actually landing on Labor Day. Uh, I didn't do this intentionally. I just scheduled all the webinars for six days after each other, and it just happened to land on Labor Day. Um, I am still planning on running that webinar at 7 p.m. on uh, September the 2nd, Labor Day, um, as planned. So uh, I know a lot of guys last week said that they would still be here and be around for it, even though I've got some uh, birthdays and anniversaries and son's birthdays coming up uh, with you guys next week um, but I will I will still be here as planned I didn't want to cancel that just because it I accidentally scheduled it on a holiday unless it simply uh, would not work out for you guys I'll I might have to I might have to do some playing around with Pinterest do you do anything with Pinterest Alice in terms of marketing um, or is that something you're just kind of uh, having have an interest in outside of marketing. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your comments, John. Um, I, I appreciate it. Glad, glad you uh, enjoyed it tonight. And um, thank you, everyone else. Wow, I'm getting a lot of thank yous here. <laughs> uh, You're quite welcome, Alice. Thank you as well. Thank you too, George. Hope you have a great week. Uh, you are quite welcome. Uh, thanks for your comments tonight as well. Um, I really appreciate all of uh, you guys, you know, help each other out with uh, expanding my own knowledge, obviously, especially when it comes to particular companies or software or something. Um, you know, it's hard for me to know everything, so you're the input you guys have to offer on some of those things that I may not already know is is uh, awesome and uh, seems to help everybody out. Thank you, Rhonda. See you next week. I will. I will. I will spend some time. Uh, might have to interview my wife and see what she knows about Pinterest and then uh, dive into it myself a little bit and see if I can't uh, come up with some uh, some plans there in terms of uh, Pinterest marketing because I guess that's, that's kind of what I 
like to do. I like to I like to go into a site like Pinterest, for example. I like hearing what other people might have to say in terms of what's worked for them um, and what they've done. But then, in an, in addition to that, like I don't like just taking the standard strategy and rehashing it. I like to try it out myself, see what works and what doesn't, and you know, make some adjustments from it. And in essence, come up with uh, my own way of doing things. So um, I can't guarantee it'll happen quickly, but I'll I'll see what I can uh, come up with on on Pinterest since I have not taken the time to dive into that uh, very heavily before. Well, a lot of a lot of you guys seem to have some interest in uh, Pinterest. Uh, many, many of you here. So, yeah, the, I will I will definitely check that out and uh, see what I could come up with for you guys. I may even be able to put that into um, possibly some of the some of the end webinars where I'm going into marketing uh, for you guys. Um, thank you, Pamela. See you next week as well. Thank you, uh, Chris, uh, also. Um, look forward to next time. Uh, thank you. Uh, look forward to seeing you next week as well. Chris, hope you have a great week. Hope you have a great week as well, Pamela. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. Uh, you're quite welcome, Gail. Thank you as well. Thanks for uh, coming out with me tonight. And um, uh, I'll be sure to look out for your uh, your email, Gail, if you'd like to contact me over the next week or so. Uh, thank you, Laura. Uh, appreciate your comments and uh, hope you have a great night. I'm sure I will see you uh, next week as well. Thank you, Colm. Uh, appreciate your comments, and uh, thanks for coming out tonight. Good night, Linda. Have a good holiday weekend as well. If you're yeah, if you're if you're not able to uh, attend live next week, then um, you know catch the replay and and uh, feel free to email me if you have any uh, any questions. <laughs> you you know you know Linda um I I have I have tried my my wife is not a techie uh oriented type of person whatsoever um her her um uh, her forte when it comes to computers is you know she's she's more like your common uh, computer user out there these days where she's into you know the social stuff she's on uh, Facebook and Pinterest doing stuff like every single day all day long um, and I've, I've tried to talk her into uh, she doesn't believe me that that she actually has information that actually some marketers might even find valuable um, but I've I've never been able to talk her into it she says you make the money and I'll raise the kids. Don't ask me to get involved in that. <laughs> Although I get I get plenty involved in the in the raising of the kids. <laughs> uh, thank you, Martin. Uh, thanks for your comments. Thank you for uh, coming out tonight, and uh, hope to see you again next week. I have to stand up in two hours. Yeah, I've I've been sitting here for two and a half. It gets it gets a little it gets a little hard to sit in one place after two to three hours or so. Uh, these webinars are probably about my extent of sitting all in one place at one time. But um, it's the it's the most um, I don't know an enjoyable time where I don't I don't even think about it being two to three hours or so. Like the time the time really seems to go pretty uh, quickly for me on my end. 
Um, I can't imagine having to cram training into a single hour. I've heard a lot of people run like 60 or 90 minute webinars and um, I just, I, I like to take the extra time to explain things. Um, and then obviously to have, have plenty of time to let you guys ask me uh, questions. Yeah, it sounds like she, yeah, the right brain side of techiness like Pinterest. True, true. It is it is a different uh, side to the techiness, uh, definitely. I I remember um, this this year is actually the first year that I've gotten even somewhat uh, a normal user on Facebook, um, and even still, I'm it's still something that I'm trying to make a more regular habit out of. Um, uh, but when I when I was first getting on into Facebook or trying to make it more of a daily habit um, and connect with uh, customers and stuff on it earlier uh, this year, um, I asked I asked her I was just like, honey, where do I find this? And I, I felt I felt horrible doing that. I'm just like I shouldn't be approaching you for tech advice, but you know, <laughs> it's quite all right, I suppose. Oh well, uh, thank you very much, Gail. Gail says this is the most informative training webinar I've ever been on, and I really appreciate you. Uh, thank you, Gail. Uh, I appreciate you as well. I I, uh, I love hearing great comments that you know this is actually helpful for all of you guys too, because um, obviously that's what it's all about. If it wasn't, I simply wouldn't be uh, running these. So I'm very very glad to hear that. Um, you've had a good night tonight, and I uh, hope you have a great week as well, Gail, and I'll see you again uh, next week, I hope. Bye, Nicole. Have a great night. Good night, Alice. It's only 2.30 GMT here, Colm. Where is that at? In uh, England, Western Europe? I think it's five or six hours difference there. You'll take a toothpick for your eye, but it's really worth it. <laughs> North UK. Oh, uh, I, I I went to the UK once. Um, Cole, I I took a trip there with my uh, mom actually, and uh, toured the whole country. Just rented a car and drove a huge circle around there. I went up to uh. Is that anywhere near like Edinburgh, Scotland, uh, where where you live? I really liked uh, all those little castle towns and um, all the all the different things that there were to see in the in the UK. It was a great great trip. Um, I'd love to uh, get a chance and take my my wife and my kids out there. And uh, I've got some some family around the uh, Bath area too, uh, Bath Bath England. They live out in the country, and family in Ireland as well. So I'm sorry if you guys don't like the Irish. I'm not directly Irish though. Oh, you are Irish. That's cool. Ever go to Ireland? Posh? It's it's posh in Ireland. Is that what you're saying? Manchester. Oh, that reminds me of um. I think it was called Chester. Have you ever have you ever been to uh, Chester, England, Colm? I got lost there. Their roads were horrible. A series of winding one-way streets, <laughs> dead ending and back alleys and. I got so lost in there that I literally gave up trying to get out of that city and found the first hotel and just went to sleep.
I'm the left brain in our duo, Linda, and the husband is the right brain. Oh, he draws for a living. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and you program everything in the house that needs it. You know, that, that sounds a lot like um, um, me and my wife, except kind of uh, backwards. Um, she is very, very artistic. Um, I, I consider myself to be a little bit artistic in some ways. Um, I had a, an, an aunt who was a professional artist. Um, she did um, oil painting portraits uh, for a living. Um, so I think I got a little bit of that art, art skill, which is kind of what propelled me into going into art college um, for computer animation. And then I figured out after I was there for a while that it wasn't quite for me, and I, I s still wish I had gone for something more like computer science instead. <laughs> you were... Oh, really? Uh used to get antiques there in, in Chester. And that was, I don't know if it was just me or, or being a foreigner having never been there before or something, but I, I found Chester to be horribly, horribly confusing place. Had a, had an awesome time there though. And, and can't wait to uh, go back to that, to the to the whole country really I haven't I've never even been able to visit Ireland um, my grandfather on uh, my on my mother's side which is why I, I took that trip with my mother because it's her uh, side of my family that lives in Bath and also um, in Ireland and uh, I've I've never been to Ireland myself but my my middle name is Patrick uh, so I was I was named after my Irish uh, heritage at least <laughs> oh you're from Dublin that's that's cool I I can't remember the name of the city that my family comes from they're they're Lavins though um, and I was from they're they're from some small uh, from small Irish town uh, can't remember what it is for the life of me your your son's name is Ryan Patrick. Seriously, that's awesome, Gail. That's yeah, that's my name, Ryan Ryan Patrick Stevenson. <laughs> what a small world it is. Wow, I I I run into a lot of you guys from from the other side of the world that I have uh, so much in common with. It's it's almost uncanny in a lot of ways. Yeah, if you have red hair, that should be where it should be Irish uh, descent. I would, I would think. I don't. I guess I don't have red hair. I'm loaded with freckles. I got pale skin and freckles, and uh, I go out in the sun. I uh, burn to a crisp in a solid thirty minutes or so, and then it all uh, peels off a few days later, and I'm pasty pale again. I. Don't tan very great. <laughs> Austria. Oh, you live in you live in Austria, Nicole. I should probably let's see. I'll still see her.